Hi, welcome to joining Peter Feuchtwanger's Piano Technique, Chapter 4. This time, I'd like to approach to the most popular polonaise by Chopin in A-flat major, opus 53. This brilliant, heroic, and challenging piece fascinates almost all piano students, but the famous left-hand part with octave sequences could be dangerous for the forearm and the wrist if you practice improperly. Please never cause her to the tendon and avoid practicing which causes pain. Bar 1 to 11, right hand. You could play these semiquaver fourth segments, non legato, to avoid sticking in the keys. Watch the shoulder and the neck, they must be free. Light touch makes it easier and quicker to play. Bar 13. Left hand. You can practice this octave scale backwards. This method is much more efficient than to practice 100 times forwards with failure. During the play, you should mind your posture. The arm and the shoulders must be free and don't pull back the head. Both hands together. Bar 17 to 22, left hand. Don't try to force your arm moving in zigzag form. It would be counterproductive. Instead, move your arm in a circular form so that the shoulder joint could follow smoothly, in this case clockwise. Meanwhile, it is also important to give attention to the thumb. The thumb should go around actively. This gives the drive to travel on the keyboard and helps to release the hand. Both hands together. From bar 23, right hand. The double octaves after the demi-semiquaver rest should be played in one impulse. Just let the hand fall and rebound on the keys. Just like this bar. The elbow and the forearm must be free, so you can avoid getting rigid and will feel at ease. This way of play gives here natural sound and agogics. Left hand. Like the previous part, move your arm clockwise. both hands together. Bar 49 to 50 and 53 to 54. Try not to fix your hands and the upper arms. 
Let the shoulders and the arms free, and let the hands rebound just like the previous example. Right hand. Bar eighty one to eighty two. Feuchtwanger recommends here to release the fingers from the keys after each arpeggio chord and keep holding just the highest note because of the sound effect. Take the opportunity to relax your hands before the challenging part is coming. From bar 85, take the four octave sequences in one impulse in one circle. That makes the hand going around anti-clockwise. Take the comfortable hand posture for you. At first, you should practice here in a slow tempo and very lightly in pianissimo. After each octave, close the hand to release the tensions in the forearm. The wrist must be also free. When you get used to do it and feel at ease, you can gradually increase the tempo and the dynamics. If you feel any slightest tensions or pain, you should have a break or play another piece. Bar 96 to 97. Here's the switchback. And now it's going around clockwise. For the shoulder, it is more comfortable than the anti-clockwise direction. both hands together. Bar 142 to 147. Left hand. You can play the forzato note with the thumb. It is much easier and more secure than to play with the fifth finger. And so your arm can travel around each bar in one circle comfortably. So long for this time. Thank you for watching the video. You can apply the principle to any other pian pieces. Try by yourself and good luck. Bye for now.